Welcome to this Prolon training video. My name is Daniel Kerwin and in this segment we are going to look at the new features in Focus 7.0 which is going to be cloud enabled. The Prolon's cloud service is going to be completely free. There are no registration fees, no annual license fees. All you have to do is download the latest version of the Prolon Focus software and you will be able to access the cloud free of charge. We are going to start by opening the Focus software. Here we see something that we did not have before in previous versions. So now everybody is going to be able to log in onto their Prolon Focus cloud account. If you wish to create a new account, simply press on new account. So simply enter all of your information right here. And please note that your email address is going to be your user login. At the bottom here, we can see where we can choose the unit system, which we want to be displayed on the screen, as well as the time format as well. We will notice here on the bottom right, just below the login button, it does say requires internet. So if you wish to use all of the cloud features, we do need to be connected onto the internet. If your computer is not connected to the internet, you're, you're still able to access Prolon controllers. However, you will not be able to access all of the cloud features. So I'm just going to enter my login right here. All right, and in this case, I'm going to create a new project. Okay, so now that we're in our working space, we can see that the layout of the software has been slightly updated. So first of all, on the left-hand side, we can see that all the controllers have been divided into three separate categories. First off, we have the master controllers. So here's where we'll find our zoning rooftop, the zoning heat pump controller, hydronics, and the makeup air. In the second category, we have our zone controllers, where we have our VAV, our thermostat, the single zone rooftop, as well as the single zone heat pump controller. And the third category is where we have all of the rest of the controllers. So our humidity controller, the boiler controller, the water loop controller, the copper theft, and the flex IO. Next, we're going to look at the connection menu. So on the left hand side, we can see that the default connection method is through a serial port. However, we are able to change that. I can simply put my mouse over the word serial and click. And it's going to bring the connection menu. So I can choose what type of connection. So as usual, we have the serial connection. And in which case right here, we can choose which serial port we are using. If we are going through IP, here we can enter our IP address. And you'll notice that we have separated the internal IP from the external IP. So if your computer is connected onto the local area network in a building, then you could connect to the network controller through the internal IP. And if you're trying to dial in externally, well then we can use the external IP instead. As in previous versions, we still have the modem option. And one of the novelties is a Bluetooth connection. So in this case, our computer will be connecting via Bluetooth to our RS-45 to USB converter, which is Bluetooth enabled. So in this case, I'm going to connect onto a project through IP. I'll press on save and if I want to connect I simply press on the connect button and as soon as I get the green check mark it means that I am currently connected onto that system. Now I'm going to add some controllers which are connected to the system. So I know that I have a rooftop controller so I can just drag and drop it in or I can just click on it once and I'll put its address. I can discover all of the other addresses 
simply by doing right click get list okay so here's my system if I go on to project edit here we can edit all of the details on the project so I could call this one building ABC we can enter the address See right here and you can ch choose your country and the province or state obviously and here's just one last field where you can add either a company name or any other kind of detail which would have to do with that specific project so when I click on save I can see that on the top left that it is saved as uh, the name of the project next we can go on to project share so in this menu we can share our project with anybody else who has an account on Prolon's cloud service so I can simply click on add participants right here and you can enter the email address of the specific person that you would like to share the project with and you can also give them different levels of access so if they have an advanced access it means they can access every single parameter and change configurations within controllers if we give them the standard access it's essentially a restricted access where they'll still be able to see everything however most of the configuration menus have been grayed out but they are still able to change schedules and space temperature set points and so on you can also send it out to different groups as well and these groups can be configured in another menu now we're going to go into the project notes right here so in this menu we can enter notes which will be specific to this specific project this feature is going to be very useful when you have multiple technicians from a single company which will be accessing a prolon system perhaps on, on different occasions and so here is a chance for them to be able to put specific notes for that service call when they were there on a specific day or any other piece of information which might be useful later on for somebody else who is accessing that system so I can simply click on add note we can enter the subject so for example I'll put a service call and then here they can write the actual note so I can say something like changed filters in RTU 1 and RTU 2 So I'll click on add note so now this note is going to be logged into the project so we'll see who wrote the note what is the subject and when was the note made and right here on the bottom we'll see what is the actual content of the note so that way if a technician shows up on a project one of the first things that he will probably want to do is just go take a look at the notes section just to see if there's any of his colleagues who perhaps was there before him and he didn't know about it and now he can see what his colleague had done at that point the next menu that we're going to see are the access logs from this menu we're going to be able to track changes applied to any controller on a prolon system we'll be able to see who made the change which controller was changed and when did it happen so just to give us an idea of what this would look like if I open up a controller here and I'll go change one of the set points so I'll go config pressure independent and I'll change one of the values here 
300 CFM, apply. And then on another controller, let's say the humidity controller, I will um, override the humidifier. So I'll just right click on it, go on override to 100%. Okay. Now when I go back to the access log menu, I can see that the changes have been logged. So I can see that there was a change applied on VAV number two. At the moment, we're not gonna know exactly which specific setting was changed. That's probably gonna come with a later version. So I was able to see that there was a change applied on VAV number two and that an override was applied on the humidity controller. Just a note to remember, the uh, this access log is permanent in the sense that we cannot edit this log. So we are always going to know any change which was made and we'll be able to track who made those changes. Next, we're going to look at the snapshots. In this menu, we can save a snapshot of our system. What exactly is a snapshot? Essentially, it's a backup configuration file, which can be shared and used as a reference for this specific project, or it can also be used as a reference for any other project. In this case, it is useful for a contractor who would like to be able to view a previous configuration of the system. Now we're going to talk about project management. Or in other words, how to save a project on the cloud, how to load a project, and so on. Let's start with the system that we, ha that we have already set up right here. Once all the controllers have been properly configured for the application, we can save the project onto the cloud by going File, Save, and here we go. So here it says Saved to Cloud Successfully. So now the project has been saved onto the cloud if you wish to save the project locally on your computer you can simply click on save PRL and now you can save that project on your computer disk drive so if we wanted to load an existing project I could simply do file open And so here we have a list of all the projects that have been saved onto the cloud. And I can see right here at the bottom, here is our project right here. So the name of the project is obviously the name which we gave at the beginning. So we can see when was the file created, when was it last modified, and when was it last accessed. We can also have a little uh, summary of how many controllers there are in that Prolon project. So if we just click on the little triangle right there, we will be able to simply just click on that, press on open, and it will open up that project. If we open this one right here, which I done at Prolon's office, so here we have the actual project itself, and then all these other ones which has a little camera icon beside it. Well, this is the snapshot. So as you can see, in one project, you can have multiple snapshots. So it's essentially the backup configurations, which we can always revert to, to see what the past configurations were for. We have ways of sorting these projects. So you can sort them by these different fields here. So when was it created, which year, the city, in which state or province is it, or based on the company. We can sort them alphabetically. And if ever we have many, many, many projects here, and uh, it can be a little bit cumbersome to find the specific project that you're trying to load, you can just click on the search right here and then here I could search let's say ABC I'll click on search and then I will have all the 
projects which have ABC in it pop up and here's the project which we have right now. Anyone who has an existing Prolon project is now able to upload it to the cloud. So simply import the existing file by going to import PRL. So here we will import our existing project file. So let's say I'll take bank project one, open. So here was the existing project file from before. And I'll just simply do as we did previously, file save. Now it has been saved onto the cloud. And this project was initially called bank project one. Now if I go to load an existing project, I should see the bank project. And here it is. Okay, we're just going to reload the existing project which we had before. So I'll go get it and I will reconnect. One of the newer features in Focus 7 is the template system. So in previous versions we were able to create templates for any given controller and you could save that template onto your local disk drive. Now we have revamped that system a little bit. So I can go onto any given controller and it, just like we could do before we could configure it exactly to our liking. Now if we had multiple controllers which you wanted to configure identically we can use the template system. So now we can save as a template so in this case you would be saving it onto your local computer. If you want to load a template, well, here are where there are things which were updated. So if I do load template, so we can either go get a template on our local computer, just like we could before. But now one of the newer features is that we are able to go browse our existing projects. So I can click my projects, I'll click on browse. Now we have a list of all of our projects, which is going to pop up. So I could say, go look at the Prolon Office project. I will choose this project. And then we have a list of all the controllers of that specific project. So I could go into Neil's office here. I'll click select. So now I could use the configuration which is in this controller right here on that separate project and I could load it into my actual controller which I'm looking at right here. So what this allows you to do is you can use previous projects as a reference and you can use them as templates for your newer projects. We also take that feature one step further. I can do options, apply template. So let's say we had multiple controllers of the same kind that we want to apply the same, uh, the same template to all of them. I can say apply template. So in this case we can choose is it a VAV controller, is it a thermostat, a single zone heat pump or single zone rooftop controller. And in this case I could say go get we'll say uh, that same one that we were looking at before so we said Neil and now I could choose to use the VAV controller which is number 14 on this project I can choose to apply it to all three VAVs which I have in my current project right here or I could choose only to apply it to two of them so obviously with these check boxes here you can choose which controller are we applying that template. Okay, the final aspect that we're going to view in this video is the icon on the top right, right here. So we can see that my name is right here. So we're able to click on it and we can edit the profile of the person who is currently logged in. So we have all the information right here, which we can change. 
We can change the preferences, whether it's for the units or for the time format, change the password, change the email, or close your account should you choose to not want to use your account anymore. We're going to have notifications as well. So in this window, we will receive notifications in case someone has shared a job with us or if our level of access has been changed. From here, from the Manage Projects button, so here we're able to share projects, we can transfer administration rights, we can share snapshots, or we can delete projects from our cloud account. We can manage the user groups this is essentially when we want to share a project. We had seen that we can share it either to an individual email or we can share it to a group. So here's where you can enter multiple email addresses into a single group. So in this case, instead of having to go, if we just go back, share, if I add a participant, so we can share it to a single email or we can share it to a group right there. So to edit the emails in that group, we, uh, we will just do manage user groups. And at this point, we can add multiple email addresses. And we can choose to log out from our account as well. And that concludes our video segment for today. You can find more information on our website, www.proloncontrols.com.